Hi everyone, thanks again for visiting my channel, Crocheting Around My Kitchen Table. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you know when I upload a new video tutorial. For this video tutorial, we're going to revisit my Fidget Cross keychain. Instead of using pony beads, we're going to be using alphabet beads. The materials you will need for this tutorial is any worsted weight yarn of your choice, of course. Uh, this is Premier Yarn and Turquoise. You will need two hooks. You will need a hook to crochet with, and you will need a hook that will fit through your alphabet bead. You will need a needle. I like using these big eye needles. You will need a keychain, because we're going to make it into a keychain. And you will need scissors. But most importantly, you will also need alphabet beads. As you can see, there's two different kinds in here. There, I started off with the solid color with the white lettering, and then I added the white just to combine it and also to fill in where I was missing vowels. You'll find that they don't have very many vowels in these. So um, if you want to use the solid white with the black letters or the black with the white letters, I think that would be pretty too. So let's get started. So for this tutorial, I decided to use two inspirational words for my fidget cross keychain. You can certainly use one word with a combination of pony beads. Still is pretty. In this particular tutorial, I've chosen the word hope and the word joy. And I'm going to arrange them so that I make sure that I have the correct letters and that it looks good. So, there we have that. Now there is five rows of letters. You cannot put them or thread them in the upright position or the correct side position. Some of them are going to have to go upside down on your needle and some of them are going to go um, right side up. So with that, the rule of thumb, the first letter that goes on your needle will always be upside down. In this case, H is the same, upside down, as it is right side up. The next row will be right side up, always. The next, the third row, will be upside down. The fourth row will be right side up. And the last row will always be upside down. Just like that. Now remember, the first one is also upside down, but because I chose H, it uh, works out the same way. It's just fine with me. I don't have to make that many mistakes. Now, we just need to thread our needle and start loading our beads. So this will be, again, the first letter that you thread, the top letter, will be upside down. The next row will be right side up. So joy will always be joy. Second row. Third row will be upside down. The fourth row will be right side up. And the last row or the fifth row will be upside down. Now that we have gotten them into the correct position, let's get started with crocheting. First, you'll begin by making a slip knot. And this is just how I do my slip knot. You can make your slip knot how you like. We begin by chaining six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. In the second chain from the hook, we're gonna make one single crochet. You're going to chain three. One, two, three. This is where our beads will be placed. I'm going to bring up that little heart bead close to the knot, turn it around and come in on the opposite side of the loop into the bead with my smaller hook and I'm going to pull the loop through the bead 
I'm going to drop the smaller hook. I'm going to pinch the loop and the working yarn and slide that bead onto the chain. I'm going to pick up my crochet hook and at the very beginning of the chain we made I'm going to place one single crochet. So I'm going to skip all of these chains to the end and make one single crochet. That's what that looks like. I'm going to turn my work and begin row two. In row two, we're going to chain one. In that single crochet we made, we're going to place one single crochet. We're going to chain three again. I'm going to remove my crochet hook, bring up another bead. On the opposite end of that alphabet bead, I'm going to reach in and grab that loop and pull it through. Pinch it and slide that bead onto the chain three. Make sure the crochet stays in focus. We're going to skip over the bead and the chain three, at the end of the row, we're going to place one single crochet into that single crochet. And that ends row two. In row three, we're going to turn our work again. You're going to chain one, and you're going to place one single crochet into that first single crochet. You're going to chain three. One, two, three. We're going to remove our crochet hook. We're going to bring up another bead close to the loop. We're going to use our hook, come in from the opposite side of where the loop is, grab the loop, bring it through. I'm going to pinch that and slide the P onto the chain three. Turn my work back around because I'm right handed. And I'm going to place one single crochet at the end of the row into the single crochet at the end. And that ends row three. To begin row four, we're going to turn our work. We're going to chain one. And place one single crochet in that first single crochet. You're going to chain three. One, two, three. Drop our hook. Bring up three beads, which is our crossword here. And I'm going to attempt to place all three. You don't have to, but I'm going to do it. Go through all three. And they fit with just enough room to place that loop on there and grab it. And then I'm going to pull it through all three. I'm going to pinch the loop, slide my word onto the chain three, grab my hook to continue crocheting, tighten that down a little bit. And I'm going to place one single crochet at the end of the row into that single crochet. And that ends row four. To begin row five, I'm going to turn my work again, chain one, place one single crochet into that first single crochet. I'm going to chain three, one, two, three. I'm going to drop my crochet hook, pick up my beading hook, that's what I'm going to call it. I'm going to come in from the opposite side of that alphabet bead, grab the loop, just to pull it through the bead, pinch the loop in the working yarn and slide that H onto the chain three. I'm going to pick up my crochet hook, 
Place one single crochet at the end of the row into that single crochet. And that ends row five. To begin row six, I'm going to turn my work again, chain one, place one single crochet into that first single crochet, chain three, one, two, three, no beads. We're just going to end this row by placing one single crochet at the very end in that last single crochet. And that ends our crocheting and placement of the beads. Now we're going to continue on with placing the single crochet border. To make our border, we're going to chain one. We're not going to be placing any stitches in any of the yarn. We're going to be placing the stitches in the spaces. And this creates the space that these beads need to rotate freely. I've chained one. I'm going to place one single crochet in this space between the top letter and our last row. And I will place one single crochet in the spaces, not the sides, all the way back to the beginning chain. I'm not crocheting too tightly, but I'm also not crocheting too loosely. And see that gives a space in between the rows and gives these letters a little bit more movement. In the beginning chain that we made, you're going to place seven single crochet in that space all around that chain. Two, three, four, and you can certainly start tacking down the tail, five, six, and seven. I'm going to count that. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. It's all moving. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I'm going to keep carrying this tail just a few more down and then I'm going to let it go because I'm going to want to weave it in, in the other direction. We're going to do the same we did on this side over here on this side, on the opposite side. One single crochet in the spaces and not the stitches. I'm trying not to pull too tight, but still be snug enough to look neat. So we don't want it to look like a potato chip. We have reached the last row that we made, and we already had one single crochet, so we're just going to place six single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Now instead of slip stitching into that first single crochet, I'm going to make an invisible close. To make an invisible close, I'm going to trim my yarn And I'm going to, from the very last single crochet that I made, I'm going to just pull the loop out and tighten that down. I'm going to thread the tail onto my needle. I'm going to find the V stitch push my needle through 
just like that. And what we're doing is we're creating an invisible or a false stitch just to make it look seamless. I'm going to go back into where that yarn came from or the top of the last V stitch of the last single crochet. I'm going to push my needle through in between that last V stitch. And see how it creates a seamless close there or invisible close if you will. And then what I'm going to do is just weave it in like I would any tail. A few times here. Be careful not to pull it too tight because then you'll lose that invisible seam and it'll look very, very odd. Now, in the first video I made with the fidget cross keychain, I created a loop, but this time I'm just going to weave this in because I'm going to use my hook to attach my keychain in a different way. I just trim that. Then I'm going to weave in this tail and we'll attach our keychain. I have woven in all the tails. I'm going to place my keychain right about in the middle somewhere, just like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply put my big eye needle into the stitch where I'm going to place my keychain. And I'm going to carefully place the eye right under that stitch in the back. Before I would make the loop, but this time I decided not to because I think it's much more secure too and can easily be replaced. I'm going to find the edge of that key ring and what I'm going to do is use the groove as a guide. And I'm going to simply just put it in between the groove and slide it through. And you can see that it's on there. I'm going to remove the hook. I just used the groove, went through the groove. I'm going to take the needle out and then just simply roll the key ring to where it's secure just like that. I'm going to demo a couple more times placing this keychain in the back while using the needle. So that groove right there is going to be the track that I follow to place the tip of this in here. So I've separated that. I'm going to just use that right in between and push it through. You already see it on the other side. I'm going to pull out the needle and I'm just going to secure that all the way around. And it's already on there. As you can see, it's a very pretty keychain with a mix of the letters and the pony beads. Here's this one here pretty yellow beads, gold, with a dark blue background, or it's kind. One, one, two, three, four, and once again, I'm just going to pick just two here. I'm going to slide that in there, in place. I'm going to open up this key ring. And when you use it, I'm going to bring it up close. See the tip? Just going to use that in between. I'm going to slide out the needle and just complete securely knit. And it's on there. 
I finished placing all the keychains to the backs of my fidget crosses that I've made. Here is one for peace, one for bless, in very pretty colors. You can use them for any event, church event, birthday, commemorate a loved one's name. They're good for holidays. Here's Thanksgiving samples, grace and bless in pretty fall colors. And of course, you don't really need to use alphabet beads. Just thought it'd be a nice change because they're just as pretty using pony beads. This has been my video tutorial for the Fidget Cross Keychain using alphabet beads. I'd like to thank you for visiting my channel crocheting around my kitchen table. Please be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you know when I upload a new video tutorial or revisit an old one. Thanks again for watching.